Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. All right, it's the last day of my shirt weekend. I gotta go back to work tomorrow and uh, hopefully maybe get the plant running again. But on this day, what I wanna do um, is one of the things I need to get done is I need to get the cats over and get them vaccinated. Um, it's been a little while since that happened. And in fact, uh, I haven't had them to the vet since I moved into the house. So we're gonna go try out a new vet today and see how they do and get them vaccinated and get them up to date. And uh, hopefully we'll see what else we can do to get ourselves in trouble. So I got a packet of stuff that's all the vet records and stuff like that. And I wanted to dig through that because if we're going to start up with a new vet, uh, it'd be a good idea if the vet knew what their medical history was. So had a whole bunch of stuff that uh, doesn't pertain to them anymore, Pert pertains to previous cats that aren't with us anymore. So I separated out all the stuff that has to do with bite and nibble and all the stuff that previous pets. And we're going to bring that over to uh, the vet and let them do their thing. And we got bite and nibble corralled in their cat carriers and bite clearly is not very happy about all this uh, They never are Meow. Even she's a little whiny you don't usually hear her meow like that But she doesn't want to be there anywhere any more than uh, than he does All right, so that's kind of interesting. I went to the vet that I wanted to go visit today and uh, apparently they aren't taking patients right now. I don't know what's going on. Maybe this is something in Waco. Uh, but they said if, uh, if I turned in all my documentation for the cats and waited four to six weeks, maybe they'd see me then. It's like, eh, I don't want to wait four or six weeks to, to get an appointment to uh, go see a vet. I mean, you know, there's lots of vets around here. We'll go try and find another one. I know they have one over at the, uh, at the PetSmart uh, and uh, I've brought I've brought the cats over to PetSmart before for veterinary activity, so I'm gonna run over there and see if they can do anything for me, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so that's kind of interesting. PetSmart isn't taking patients either, and uh, you know they they didn't really give me an explanation. It's just you know it's the same kind of thing I got at the other place. You uh, you know give us the records and and maybe we'll call you in a couple months. It's like you know I don't know what's going on here, but. Um, we are getting kind of close to the end of my weekend here, so I don't really have a whole bunch of time to, to continue trying to figure this out. We might have to try, um, abort this one for today and uh, pick it up on some later date and see if we can figure out what's going on. But yeah, I don't know, though, weird vet shortage right now in Waco. Not really sure why. So several weeks have passed since I had shot that last scene and I have finally managed to get an appointment to see a vet. I also have a better understanding why this has been such a chore. Apparently during the whole COVID thing, uh, people compensated for the lockdowns by getting lots and lots of pets. And apparently that has meant that every vet is basically at capacity right now. Now, like I said, I found one who will see me and uh, hopefully this will, will be able to take care of this. But, you know, right now, if you ever had any desire to become a vet, it sounds like right now is a good time to do it. But anyway, I got an appointment today at 2.20 to get the cats vaccinated. And what I want to do before I get going on that, since they're going to be new patients here, is I want to scan all of their vet records so that I can give all that information to the vet and uh, they'll have a record of their life history. Uh, it isn't really a whole lot. It's uh, vaccination records. It's uh, the documentation that they've been spayed and neutered. And it's also going to be information about their microchips. But I want to get that all into a digital format so I can give that to the vet when I get there. Now fortunately I have that all in one place and fortunately I have a brand new uh, scanner that I bought recently uh, for another project and uh, so we're going to get busy and we're going to do some scanning. All right, I got all the pertinent records uh, scanned in. I'm gonna just kind of bring the records in on a flash drive and uh, I'll have a hard copy of them too, but I think everybody's kind of moving into a digital format. So I think they'll appreciate that I've got digital records for them. Uh, but whatever the case is, uh, we are ready to go now. Uh, we need to go in about an hour and a half. So like I said, I wanted to get this all done ahead of time so, we're, so that when the time comes, uh, all we gotta do is just pick up and run. 
All right, I'm at the vet right now. Uh, they're per they're still kind of on uh, this lockdown for COVID. So basically, what you do is you pull into a spot in front. Uh, you call in, tell them you're here. You tell them what spot you're in, and they don't bring you in now until it's actually your time. So you just kind of hang out in the car. That's a little weird. Uh, you know, it's, it's just it's just how the world is kind of dealing with this COVID thing. Now, Nibble is not a huge fan of the vet, but actually being at the vet is one of my favorite times because it's one of the few times that I'm actually allowed to handle her. This is probably the only time you'll ever see her in my hands. And, because uh, apparently the one thing she doesn't like more than people is going to the vet. Poor little kitty. All right, we're back from the vet. Uh, cats are both vaccinated. The doctor actually said they look, both look pretty good for 15 years old. So now it's just a matter of the release here. And I always found that it's a, an amusing uh, uh, image to have them take off to the, to the back of the, back to their room again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna release the starting gate right now and we are gonna start the great race. Here we go. Okay, Bite took an easy took an easy victory here, but Nibbles close behind him. Now the cat room generally ends up as the ultimate refuge uh, when uh, when the cats need to escape somewhere. And uh, first thing I noticed is after they took off out of their cat carriers uh, back to the back end of the house, they did not go into here, which meant that they go to their ultimate fallback position. There's one place in the house that they hide, even beyond this place. Uh, and that's what happens when like we get thunder or something like that. What they'll do is they'll come in here to the bathroom. And sometimes they hide behind the toilet, but their ultimate refuge is in here. And I don't even know where the other one went here. Is the other one behind the toilet now? No, I don't know. They were both here a minute ago, but you know, they, like I said, this is their ultimate refuge. Uh, this is actually probably the reason I don't worry too much about them in a tornado because they always say the best place to go is find an interior room uh, and get into a bathtub and this meets both of those requirements. So anyway, yeah, that's uh, sort of what happens when these guys turn into scary cats. And Bite chose to surprise me. He actually came out here to the living room and was kind of hiding by the couch. Uh, I'm guessing though he'll get over this real quick. Uh, the trauma usually escapes really fast. They're usually pretty slow uh, for the rest of the day after getting vaccines. I think the vaccines kind of make them a little tired. It's been a stressful day for them, so they'll probably just nap the rest of the day along. It is definitely becoming obvious that we are moving into spring. All of the uh, old leaves are pretty much off of this thing. Um, in the next week or two, I think I want to get the cover off of the, uh, the pool, but right now there's all these little uh, pollen pods that are on the on the tree they're kind of still falling off so I want to get those all off and onto the ground before we uh, you know uncover the pool and end up with all this junk in the pool but we're definitely getting close here this tree was bare just uh just probably three or four weeks ago and look at how much it's leafed out since then I was also a little concerned that the crepe myrtles were taking a while to uh, to begin uh, budding, but they're starting to go now too. I guess they just go a little later in the season than everything else. Because as recently as just a week or so ago, you know, it was just all twigs out here. But it's, quick, it's interesting how quickly things change out here. Yeah, you see what I mean by the pollen pods? Yeah, they're just thick here. But the beauty is they just turn into really great... Uh, really great mulch and they'll help uh, fertilize the soil in here this is the area next to the patio cover that I built a year year ago and I'm very very happy to see that this ornamental grass is spreading you remember I just put the uh, the big plants in there last year but all of this other stuff here is just a uh, is just kind of naturally taking off from uh, the original plant so very happy with that I would love it if this thing completely filled in and uh, just kind of filled the whole area in and it definitely seems well on its way to doing that. A little bit windy today too, huh? Yeah, we're supposed to have some uh, rain maybe coming in tonight, so hopefully we'll get a little of that. But anyway, I think that's all we have for today. Uh, got the cats vaccinated. That's a good thing that needed to happen. And just wanted to kind of show you a little bit what's going on in the yard. But 
Uh, vlogs can't last forever, can they? So that's all I have for today. Thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.